So the first thing that goes through my mind when I'm taking a photo is anticipation. That anticipation is what makes wildlife photography so thrilling. It's hard to begin describing the feeling of photographing a moment I've been waiting for. Especially if those moments are rare and something I've been wanting to see. In those moments, I can really focus. I don't think about anything else, just getting the shot. It's those moments when you find something, all the time and effort spent looking around, it all pays off. The moment the magic happens, I feel gratitude. I'm grateful for the animal's trust to behave naturally around me and grateful for being at the right place at the right moment. Photography connects me to whatever I believe in, my passion, goals and nature. Hi, my name is Kathleen. I'm a researcher and my work focuses on human-wildlife interactions in Singapore. I try to help people and wildlife coexist in our green city and I've been photographing wildlife on the side for the last eight years. The one thing I like about wildlife photography, I think, is the element of surprise. You never know what you're going to find in the field and it's very challenging to be able to predict what's going to happen with the wildlife interacting with the environment. When you spend time and patience trying to understand the way an animal behaves, um, you learn a lot about the way that it lives and it, it teaches me about life. Hi, my name is Wuyang. I'm an environmental studies undergraduate. I love photographing all sorts of wildlife, but my favourite animals to photograph are reptiles. It's been five years since I started herping and wildlife photography. What makes me so passionate about wildlife photography is that each encounter is extremely novel. It's not often you witness a special moment, but when you do, it's a huge reward. There's this Pokemon element to wildlife photography, the feeling of wanting to catch them all. Hi, I'm Yonglin. Uh, I work as an events photographer, but my hobby is actually uh, wildlife photography. I've been doing it for about five years now. Since young, I've loved everything to do with nature and animals. We have a unique situation in Singapore, with wild animals living so closely among us. That's every wildlife photographer's dream. My favourite subject to photograph is actually otters. It's because I think they are easy subjects for beginners because of their size and they are relatively easy to spot. In Singapore, if you know where they like to go, we have almost a 70% chance of seeing them. There's a much higher heat rate of spotting wild otters than in other countries. Personally, I'm passionate about herb photography. Herbs are reptiles and amphibians. I particularly like photographing snakes. The way they move about, even though they have no limbs, is extremely fascinating to me. When other people see snakes, they tend to freak out. Snakes are very misunderstood creatures, but when I see a snake, I can't help but think how adorable they are. It's very hard to pick just one thing to choose as my favourite, but my first love that got me into wildlife photography in the first place was macro photography. I think it's so fascinating that, you know, with your naked eye, you can't really see much, but underneath the lens, you get to see so much details and it even shows such small life can be beautiful. A location that I like to photograph at is Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve. From birds to otters and even crocodiles, it is a combination of animals that gather in this place. We even get visitors as far as Russia. Sungai Bulo is actually recognised internationally as part of the East Asian Australasian Shorebird Site Network and is Singapore's first ASEAN Heritage Site. 
This place is important to me because it showcases Singapore's dedication to wildlife, not just locally, but international. Another place that's important to me is Jurong Lake Gardens. It shows how Singapore is moving forward by rejuvenating old spaces and naturalizing habitats so that we can have increased biodiversity even in urban spaces close to HDBs and private homes. The beauty about it is that people actually can just walk down from their doorstep right into the gardens to experience nature up close. One of my favourite locations to shoot at is at the Marina Bay Kalang area. As there are many iconic structures in the area, it is easy to get interesting backgrounds in your picture. In the day, I like to go to Windsor Nature Park because it's a very accessible patch of secondary forest. There's a naturalised stream running through it which makes it a great habitat for a variety of reptiles and amphibians. For night photography, as many parks are off-limits, my favourite place to shoot would be Old Upper Thompson Road. A good thing about herping is that herping at different locations or different times will allow you to spot different species of snakes. One of my most memorable wildlife encounters was watching a snake hunt. These are very rare moments and in my five years of herping, I've only witnessed two successful hunts. On this particular occasion, I watched a snake go up a tree in an attempt to ambush a gecko. It was captivating and because you could tell the snake was displaying an ability to plan ahead. A lot of the times, we do not think these animals have such advanced capabilities. There was one memorable moment where I encountered this lone otter in Drong Lake Gardens. And at that time, I only had with me a wide-angle lens. So it was quite challenging trying to photograph it, but I learned all the things in the past where if you had some patience and waited, there was always a moment where you can have an opportunity to photograph wildlife. Why this picture means a lot to me is because you can see the beauty of the urban park where it's made its home with people enjoying it too. That shows me that humans and wildlife can actually coexist together in our green city. For me, the most memorable moments are when I'm witnessing the social interaction between the otters especially when they're pups. It is very fascinating to watch the adult otters work together to care for the young ones and teach them skills like swimming and hunting. One of the toughest aspects of wildlife photography is the waiting. It's also a matter of how dirty or uncomfortable that you're willing to get. If you want to get nice shots of animals, the places that you choose to be in may not be the cleanest. I think apart from requiring a lot of patience, another challenge is spotting them. As most animals are silent and very well camouflaged, it takes keen observation skills and a lot of concentration to actually spot them. Wildlife photography takes a lot of time and effort. There are days where I feel unmotivated and reluctant to go out and shoot. There are times when things get challenging or demoralising. Not every day is a success. The successful trips are few and far between. Sometimes you think to yourself, why do I keep doing this? This is when I remind myself why I do it. To me, wildlife photography is my mode of learning. When I take my camera out into whatever space I'm in, I learn a lot from taking pictures and reframing my perception of subjects. These are moments worth going through because even though you don't see anything, it makes the next encounter even more amazing. I like to focus on composition in my photos. I'd rather capture something common in the perfect frame than something rare with bad lighting and poor composition. For me, I tend to focus on showing the environment that the animal is in. As we have different otter families all over Singapore, what I like to do is to include the landmark of a particular location in the frame. For example, when taking photos of the family at Botanical Gardens, I aim to include the symphony stage in the frame. In the Marina Bay area, my goal is to include the Singapore Flyer or Gunners by the Bay in the background. 
In my photos, I always look for a story that's able to tell how wildlife interacts with our environment, how they use it, what it means to them, and in turn, what that means for us as stewards of nature. The biggest tip that I have for aspiring photographers is to learn to be one with the environment. Being one with nature means understanding the environment and animals, staying calm, being patient, and letting nature take its course. The most beautiful photos are the ones where you let an animal show itself to you. I think animals should be shot in situ, which means photographing them in their natural state. Give animals their space so they can behave naturally, not touch or manipulate them just for a nice photo. When I can take the time to compose my shot, I look out for ways to try and make it different from other people's photos. For example, with this pit viper, I had the idea to try and show its shadow through the leaves. In herb photography, you really have to wait for the right moment and scene to come naturally. One tip I have for people to improve their wildlife photography is to get to the eye level of the animal. The angle is usually more flattering for the subject and it also allows you to include more environment to tell the story of the animal. Try to minimize the animal being aware of the human presence so that they're more comfortable. When they don't care about you and behave naturally, you tend to get the best photos. Make yourself small, disappear and be part of the environment. I aim to inspire more people to pick up photography, but more importantly, to learn and appreciate the beauty of our environment. I would like to use my work to show a world where we respect the environment and share the space with all types of life. I aim to spread awareness through my photos as to how wildlife and humans can coexist in the same space. I hope to change the misconception the public has for animals especially so for snakes, as people tend to fear them. I realised that the fear for these misunderstood animals is something that is learned rather than something you are born with. In my experience meeting people in the field, I realised kids were more curious and afraid of wildlife. It's important to educate them with the correct mindset towards animals. Wildlife photography goes hand in hand with nature appreciation. Photography forces you to observe intently, looking for subjects, looking for compositions. Then, in the split second of finding your subject, you snap into a flow state, and the rest of the world fades away. And it's just you, your camera, and your shot. People say that animals are very predictable in terms of their behaviour, patterns, and instincts. But after having close encounters with wildlife, I realised that each of them are their own individual. Each animal has their own personality and are unique and special. Photography gives me the responsibility to portray them with justice. If anything, photography has enhanced my love for nature and animals and has made me more aware of their importance.